What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Dave's Daily Dive, where I take a look at the major macro charts of the day. And then I give you five Zach's Rank number one strong buy stocks that are breaking out to new highs. That is very useful in a market like this, where everything is pretty much up, up, and away. Now, first, I want to start here with the S&P 500. So those of you who have been watching for a while know that I've been playing off the big fib that doesn't mean i'm lying to you that is this move here from the july lows to the august highs in the s p 500 and then i drew my fib retracements from there now that was good on the way down finding areas of potential support for a move lower but now we've broken through that august high and that doesn't mean that you just go ahead and scrap this that means is now we can use a fib extension so what was a retrace in this direction becomes an extension when you reflect it past those previous highs so the way you can do this on a lot of different charting platforms is you're just going to pull up whatever you know whatever your your fib settings are typically add another one now in most cases since these retracements are a positive number this would be a negative number just kind of a quirky thing that as a way to game the system, so to speak. So here, what I've done is I've drawn the 38.2% FIB extension. So that's from this move here, drop down, boom. Now we're talking extension to the upside. So 25.23. So now that we're north of 2,500, the next sort of logical step for the market becomes that 25.23. And then from beyond there, we can add the 50% extension and, and things like that. Uh, but as far as levels go, you should keep this high sort of right around this 2490 level in your sights as potential support here and then 2523 as potential resistance now that's on the s p 500. let's take a look at the nasdaq composite because this is building off a little different sort of structure now here we had a similar situation where i drew some fibs in here and you had the same thing happen it came to retrace and then boom it crept on up but, but here I don't want to focus so much on these FIB levels. What I do want to focus on is this move here where you're, you're starting to just wedge yourself up underneath or right at that those highs. So whenever you get this kind of action, it lends itself to a breakout. So actually the NASDAQ is knocking on the door of a really serious breakout to the upside. So things could get interesting there on the NASDAQ. And again, that's a price, that's a pattern where we came up, we started to wedge underneath and then broke out. Now, if you notice though, along the structure of the NASDAQ, you have a couple of instances where you get a little retracement to the 50 day, then it starts to break out, then it comes back a little bit. Another situation here where you had these highs, sort of this downward channel broke out from that, but then stalled out, retraced back to support again. So not a really bullish structure in here, uh, but it's still not terribly bearish either because you did find some support at the 50 day, just wasn't as clear cut and defined as it had been on other other rallies, right? Or, or other parts along the rally. So here, now that we're starting to butt up against the 52 week high, things are kind of chopping around a little bit. I think perhaps this could be part of a longer sort of consolidation pattern that may be developing and that may finally be breaking out to the upside. So things are looking pretty good for the NASDAQ there. Now there's one thing I want to talk about that's not really stock specific, but don't get it twisted. It is stock related. This is the dollar versus the Japanese yen. Now I've been drawing these big fibs here that we've been moving off the November to the December move. And these have provided some guidance along the way. Another thing that happened is you have this downward trend channel that eventually was broken. Now, when this first happened, I thought we were going to be off to the races. Now, unfortunately, we got capped right here at this 23.6% retracement level. And that area ended up holding firm, not only during the May spike in dollar yen, but also in the July spike. So that certainly looms above. So that's just under 115 on the dollar yen. Now, what we had happen over the last couple of weeks is you have what I like to call the rope-a-dope, which is also known as a stop grabber. So that's where an index or a currency or whatever it is, a stock, will come down just below the previous support level, get down in there intraday, but then fight its way back 
and end up closing above. Now this can happen intraday, it can happen over one or maybe two days. It does, if it lingers, obviously, then it means something, but you have these sort of intraday rope or dope patterns that come out, they blow all these stops out before it starts to move on upward. Now, since it's done that, we've seen dollar yen go from 107.50 to 111.50 in very short order over the within two trading weeks, right? So right now the first stop is sort of this 112 area, which is this 38.2% retracement. So that's kind of the first test that this dollar yen is going to have. We'll see what happens if it can find its way above that. And again, if it gets over that, then we're targeting this 114 and a half area. Now, I think it gets there. And if it does continue to make this move, that's actually bearish for your gold bets because dollar yen tends to move in the opposite direction of gold. So when dollar yen starting to creep on up, you're going to see gold prices start to come on down. And that's evident if you take a look at the ETF that everybody loves to trade, the good old GLD. And you can see since that yen has made that move that you've started to see gold give up some ground there. So... Just a little bit of food for thought, something to keep an eye on in that dollar yen, which represents an overall risk on feeling for markets. Okay, now let's take a look at these five Zacks rank number one strong buy stocks right now. So the first I'm going to throw your way is Aerojet Rocketdyne Holdings. Yes, it sounds very fancy. Uh, ticker is AJRD, and you can see here, Consolid, I mean, kind of some choppy action upward, drop back, extended consolidation, another rally up to new highs, still really kind of choppy until the last earnings report. A ton of momentum, a big gap up, and now this thing has been pushing higher. So I think it's a good thing that it found some support and never got into this gap. And even on this last retrace, came down to 28 before lifting off again. So a very bullish pattern here developing and shares of Aerojet Rocketdyne. That's ticker AJRD. The next one I got for you is Estee Lauder. So getting into the into the makeup and uh, and perfume biz, I suppose. And you can see here, after being in a downtrend, you know, trading underneath this 50-day moving average, finally gets above it to kick off the year several times. Once in April, once in July even in August, finding support at that 50-day moving average before continuing to move higher. Now it's breaking out to new highs up here at 110. A little bit concerned as the commodity channel index is a bit overbought over here at 105, but I think this is something that you can go ahead and throw a little bit of money at. I would use this 50-day moving average as a support level, so you can either wait till it starts to trickle back down here, or you can set your stop south of that 102 level, give yourself a little bit of cushion for this to continue to run. Then I've got Integris, ticker ENTG. Now remember, these are all Zach's rank number one strong buy stocks. So that means you had some recent earnings estimate revisions to the upside, which are helping to boost the stock price. And you can see here the series of higher lows that were starting to get put in as the stock butted up against resistance here, butted up again, and got it a third time. Now finally breaking out to the upside. I think this is a great little risk versus reward because you don't have to go too far south below that $27 range to put your stop. Still have the protection of that 52-week high and the hopes that it continues to break on upward. That's Integris, ticker ENTG. Then I've got Instructure, I-N-S-T, another one here for you. And this one recently gapped up to the highs. Now, sometimes this can make you a little bit nervous because you see this sort of intraday poke higher setting a new 52-week high before coming down to test that 50-day moving average again, flirting with the 50-day a few times, but then now we've got another gap up. So I'm thinking that this latest gap up can be met with enough strength where you're going to get a little bit of carry-through carry momentum here that continues to push this out to the highs. But again, if you're looking to peck at something like this, you put your stops underneath this gap just in case this gap does get filled. You also have the 50-day moving average down at 30 64, not too far away from the current stock price. That's in structure, I-N-S-T. And the last one I got for you, an oldie but a goodie, my friends over at Micron, ticker M-U. We've had a rough sort of go of this since June, July, as it was chopping, chopping around, started to really sell off, get a little bit depressing, getting close to that $26 level. 
And then something happened, and we've caught a very fierce rally ever since. I think folks are believers in Micron. It's breaking on through to new 52-week highs. This is another scenario where you can buy yourself a little bit of Micron, put your stops down below this previous 52-week high level. It would be down below 33. Give yourself a little bit of cushion, but still allow you to participate in the breakout to the upside. That's all I got for you here today with Dave's Daily Dive. Remember to check me out on Zax.com, of course, as the editor of the Home Run Investor and Momentum Trader. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at Bartosiastics, B-A-R-T-O-S-I-A-S-T-I-C-S. I'll see you guys later in the week. Have a good one.